Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our second lesson on the seventh topic of Form 4 which is called cathode ray and cathode ray tube. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that you can only achieve extraordinary results if you put in extraordinary efforts. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today I'm looking at the cathode ray oscilloscope which is abbreviated as a CRO. So the main function of a cathode ray oscilloscope is simply to uh, display the waveforms uh, uh, that are produced when the bright spot is either deflected uh, using the Y plate or the X plate. Remember the deflection of this particular electron beam can produce a spot which is either vertical, that is a vertical, horizontal, or even a sine wave. So let's look at the components of the CRO, that is a cathode ray oscilloscope. So the first component is what we call the electron gun. So the electron gun consists of the cathode rays, we have the control grid, we also have the focusing anode and of course the accelerating anode. The second component is what we call the deflection system which consists of both, both the Y and the X plate. Then of course the third component is what we call the screen which consists of uh, that is the fluorescent uh, screen. So let's discuss uh, the functions of uh, each and every uh, part of a cathode ray oscilloscope. So the first part we are starting with an electron gun. So we are saying that the main function of electron gun is it supplies the electrons towards the screen, it also accelerates uh, those electrons towards the screen, then it also focuses uh, the beam of electron uh, to a point on that particular screen. So the electron gun has three main functions uh, to supply or uh, produce electrons, accelerate electrons or the beam of a uh, cathode ray. Then the last function is to focus uh, uh, the electrons or the beam of cathode rays on a spot uh, uh, on this particular fluorescent screen. So how does it perform these functions? For example, which part is responsible for the supply or production of electron? For example, we know that a uh, a uh, cathode, uh, when you hit the cathode, we are going to have thermionic emissions whereby a stream of electrons are going to be produced. Uh, so that is how the electron gun produces, uh, that is, or supplies uh, the electrons. So let's discuss each and every uh, component of the electron gun. So it has uh, basically three components. So one, we have what we call a heated cathode, as you can see in this particular diagram. We have the cathode, then we have the filament, which is responsible for heating that particular cathode. So the heated cathode, which readily releases electrons when heated. So this one is responsible for the supply or production of electrons, of course, by a process called thermionic emission. We say thermionic is from two terms. That is thermal, which means heat, then anion, which consists of electrons and, of course, the protons. But in this case, we are talking of electrons because a cathode ray is simply a stream of uh, electrons, of course, which are being accelerated from uh, the cathode towards a given a fluorescent screen whereby we expect them to uh, glow or to form a bright spot. So the function of the heated cathode is simply to release or to supply the electrons through thermionic emission. Then the second part is what we call the grid, also called the control grid. As the word suggests, a control grid, its function is to control the intensity of the electron beam. Or in other terms, you can say the function of the grid is simply to control the brightness of the electron beam. So brightness and intensity can be used interchangeably. But the question is, how does the grid manage to control the intensity or the brightness of the electron beam? So it does so by controlling the number of electrons reaching the screen. So the grid is usually negatively charged. And remember also a stream of cathode rays, it consists of electrons, of course, which are negatively charged. So if electrons are negatively charged and the grid is also negatively charged, you are going to have a repulsion at this particular point. So if most of the electrons are repelled, that means uh, the ones uh, or the cathode ray rays that would reach the bright, that is the fluorescent screen, will be fewer, hence the brightness of the spot will be uh, reduced or the spot will not be very clear or, or it will be somehow dim. So let's discuss further, how does it exactly, uh, the grid, uh, how does the grid exactly determine the intensity or the brightness of the electron beam? So we are saying the grid is negatively charged uh, to repel, that is to repel the electrons, hence increasing or decreasing the number of electrons reaching the screen. 
Then we have what we call uh, the brightness knob, which is usually attached on the control uh, grid, uh, which can determine the, whether the grid is becoming uh, more negative or uh, less negative. So the grid is negatively charged to repel the electrons, hence increasing or decreasing the number of electrons reaching the screen, thereby determining the brightness or the intensity of the electron beam. Now, when the grid is made more negative by adjusting the brightness knob, so on the grid we usually connect what we are calling the brightness knob. So when the grid is made more negative, so if we adjust the brightness knob such that the grid is more negative, if it is more negative, it is going to repel most of the electrons that have been produced by the uh, cathode, or most of the electrons will not move past the grid, uh, past that particular control grid. So when you set the grid to be more negative, fewer electrons are going to pass through it. Therefore, most of the electrons will be repelled uh, to the other side. So if fewer electrons are reaching this area, it means fewer electrons are getting accelerated. So the fewer electrons are going to reach the uh, screen. Therefore, the brightness of the spot will be smaller because only few electrons are being allowed to reach that particular screen. However, when you set the grid to be less negative, so if you use the uh, brightness knob to set this particular control grid to be less negative, then in, in such a case, more electrons cross over to the screen. Why? When you make the grid less negative, it means the repulsion will also be very low. Because if it is less negative, more electrons are going to move uh, from the cathode ray, that is from the cathode, then they'll move past the grid. Therefore, more electrons are going to reach this particular fluorescent screen. The more the electrons reach the screen, the brighter the spot. So when the grid is made uh, less negative, more electrons cross over to the screen, hence varying the brightness of the spot on the screen, or simply hence increasing uh, the brightness of the spot on the screen. So it's a very common question. You can be asked to state the function of the grid. The function is simply to control uh, uh, or to regulate the intensity or the brightness of the electron beam. Then you can be told to explain how does the grid exactly uh, determine the brightness of uh, the electron beam. So you simply say that uh, by using the brightness knob, when the control grid is set to be more negative, uh, very few electrons will move from this particular point past that particular grid. So when the grid is set to be more negative, it is going to repel most of the electrons, and the electron beam that is going to reach the, the, the fluorescent screen will be will constitute of very few electrons, uh, and the brightness of the spot will be very low, or the spot won't be very bright. Uh. However, if you set the control grid to be less negative, that means there will be low repulsion, uh, or lower repulsion. So if the repulsion is very low, it means most of the electrons or most of the electron beam uh, electrons in the electron beam are going to move past the control grid once more electrons are moving past the control grid more electrons are going to be accelerated towards the fluorescent screen the more the electrons reaching the screen the brighter the spot so that is exactly how it controls uh, the brightness of the uh, the brightness <coughs> of the spot when it is made more negative fewer electrons most electrons are repelled hence fewer electrons reach the screen and uh, the lesser, the brighter uh, that particular uh, spot will be. But if it is set to be less negative, uh, more le when it is set to be less negative, uh, less electrons are going to be repelled, and more electrons will be allowed uh, to move towards the screen. The more the electrons reaching the screen, the brighter the spot, or the more uh, the brightness of that particular spot. Then the third part of the electron gun is what we call the cylindrical uh, anodes. Of course, there are two. We have the uh, focusing anode and the accelerating anode. So from their terms, you can be able to know each uh, their function. So they are usually maintained at a high positive potential relative to the cathode. Yeah, they are usually set uh, maintained at very high, highly uh, positively charged, uh, such that they are able to attract uh, uh, the produced beam of electrons or simply the cathode rays and accelerate them to the screen at a very high speed. So they are usually maintained at a high positive potential relative to the cathode. So their charge is more than that of the cathode. So this helps to accelerate and focus the electrons so that the beam converges into 
uh, a fine spot on the screen. So you can see this particular uh, focusing uh, beam, it is somehow uh, converging uh, this particular beam into a common point or into a bright spot. Then of course, because it is positively charged, highly positively charged, then the electrons or the cathode rays are negatively charged, there is going to be an attraction because from the law of charges, we said that uh, unlike charges will always attract each other. So the highly positively uh, charged anode is going to uh, attract the beam of electrons and accelerating them towards the screen. Next, we look at the second part of a cathode ray oscilloscope, which is called the deflection system. So from the diagram, you can be able to see that the deflection system consists of the X plates and the Y plates. Huh? So the X plate is from the term the X axis, which is usually the horizontal axis. So that simply means that the X plates will be responsible for deflecting the beam horizontally or along the X axis. So these plates ensure that this particular electron beam does not go beyond a certain point along the uh, horizontal or the X axis. Similarly, the Y plates, Y from the term the Y axis, which is usually the vertical axis. So that simply means that the Y plates will be responsible uh, for the deflection of the beam vertically or along the y-axis. As you can see, this plate ensures that uh, this particular beam does not go beyond or below a certain point along the vertical or the horizontal axis. So a combination of these two is going to produce what we are calling a bright spot. So that is the deflection system. So its function is simply to deflect the electron beam either vertically or horizontally. So it consists of two plates, of course, the x-plates and the y-plates. So let's discuss the two plates. So we start by the X plates. We have said that uh, when the input voltage is applied at the X plates, uh, remember the X plates has these two terminals. Uh, we have this lower terminal, then we have this other upper terminal. So when you apply the input voltage uh, on the X plates, for example, you can be using maybe a source of voltage such as maybe a battery or maybe uh, some cells. Uh, so when you apply the input voltage along the X plates, then this is what is going to happen. The spot, instead of the spot just being a one dot, uh, that is the bright spot here, the spot is going to uh, get deflected horizontally as shown in this particular diagram here, so across the screen. So this is as a result of applying the input voltage along the X plates. Then you are saying that a time-based circuit is always applied along the X plates. Uh, so it's a very common question. Uh, you can be told to indicate on the diagram where the time-based circuit is likely to be applied. A time-based circuit is always applied along the X plates. Huh? So, uh, so if you have a time-based circuit, huh, you apply it or you connect it on the uh, terminals, huh? these two terminals of the X plates. So when a time-based circuit is applied on the X plates, then it will cause a saw a tooth voltage to the X plates. So this graph is as a result of applying the time-based circuit on the X plate. So these will be the results. However, if you apply just some input voltage along the X plate, so you are going to apply a beam which is uh, deflected horizontally. However, if you apply a time base, then you are going to obtain what we call a sawtooth uh, voltage uh, will be obtained as shown in this particular uh, diagram. So these are a graph of voltage against time because we are talking of a time base circuit. Therefore, the graph must have some time element. Then Roman 2, we, took, we, we talk of um, the Y plates. We have said that when the input voltage is apl applied along the Y plates, then the spot will deflect uh, vertically or along the uh, Y axis that is across the screen, of course, as shown in this particular diagram. So you can see the Y plates has the two terminals. So when you apply the voltage, the input voltage along the Y plates, then uh, instead of having just a bright spot, this is what you will obtain on the screen of a cathode ray uh, oscilloscope. Then when you do simultaneous application of the input voltage at the X plates and the Y plates, it leads to the movement of the spot on the screen will be in two dimensions. That is as shown in this particular diagram here. It is going to form uh, a sine wave. So simultaneous. Simultaneous means you are applying them at the same time. That is you apply the input voltage along the uh, Y plate. At the same time you also apply at the input voltage along the X plate. So simultaneous application of the input voltage at the X plates and the Y plates will lead to movement of the spot on the screen in two dimensions. So you can see this will be the graph. So this spot will take this particular form of a graph that is the sine wave. So it leads to 
the movement of the spot on the screen in two dimensions producing a wave on the screen so this is a sine wave that will be produced as a result of simultaneous application of the input voltage on both the x and the y plates lastly we look at the fluorescent screen so the fluorescent screen this is simply where our bright spot forms so it has some special materials which glows whenever the electron beam hits it so it is the same same concept that is used in our fluorescent bulbs whereby we have some powder which is usually placed in those uh, fluorescent bulbs which glows uh, whenever the electron beam hits that fluorescent material which uh, glows and producing light that uh, enables us to see, to read and also perform other activities. So the screen consists of a glass material coated with the fluorescent substance such as the zinc sulfide which are called the phosphor. So when the accelerated electrons hit the screen, it simply glows. So the screen usually glows, uh, producing a bright spot uh, because it has what we call the zinc sulfide or, or simply what we are calling the uh, phosphor. Then lastly, we look at the evacuated strong glass tube. So this is our evacuated strong glass tube. So why is it evacuated? So we say that it is evacuated. To evacuate is simply to... Uh, remove some material medium such as air so that you create a vacuum. We can achieve that by using what we call a vacuum pump. So it is evacuated so that we, we prevent uh, some air molecules that will be inside colliding with uh, the electron beam because when they collide, the electron beam are going to lose some of their kinetic energy. Therefore, the uh, spot that will be formed won't be uh, bright enough because the electron beam do not have enough energy to hit the uh, fluorescent screen at the speed which is required. So the inside of the glass tube is coated with the graphite. So you can see we have this particular graphite here, which is coating the inside of that particular uh, envelope. That is the strong glass tube. So this graphite has three main functions. So the first one, the graphite allows conduction of electrons to the earth. So it acts like an earthing uh, terminal. Remember, graphite is a good conductor of uh, charges or electrons. The second function of the graphite is that it shields uh, the electron beam from external electric fields. Remember we said that cathode rays are charged, they are negatively charged, therefore they will be affected by both electric and magnetic fields. So that is why uh, we are preventing it uh, uh, from in interfering or interacting with those fields because if it happens then the electron beam will always bend uh, towards the positive terminal of that particular um, electric, that is the electric uh, terminal. Remember the electric, that is the electrons uh, or simply the cathode rays are usually negatively charged. Therefore, they will always bend uh, towards the positive terminal if you are introducing an electric field. But we need them to hit our screen. Uh, so to prevent that change of direction, we simply shield uh, the electron beam from external electric field so that uh, we allow the electrons to move in a straight line as they hit our fluorescent screen so that we are able to observe the uh, waveforms using our cathode ray oscilloscope. Then the third function of the graphite is that it accelerates the electrons towards the screen since it is at the same potential as the anode. Remember, anodes are positively charged, so the graphite will also be at the same potential that is positively charged. Therefore, any beam of electrons will always be accelerated towards the screen by those particular graphite. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that, you can only achieve extraordinary results if you put in extraordinary efforts. So the quote is reminding us about the importance of doing our best in everything we do. Recall that expecting the best results when you didn't give in the best efforts is like expecting a giraffe to win a swimming competition against aquatic animals such as the fish. Therefore, you need to be purposeful about the amount of efforts and concentration you dedicate towards the process of achieving your dreams. Otherwise, it will just remain to be a wish. And lastly, recall that success is doing the extra. So ask yourself, what extra are you doing in, in your academics or a, what extra are you doing in your life to ensure that you achieve your dreams? Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.